Last time in Might and Magic 2, we finally learned that King Charles didn't ever lose his mind to begin with like we had believed. It was all just a ruse and to make it believable, he even risked his life alongside us to protect the city. He even led us to fight a false war fabricated by him where many people lost their lives. He tricked us into bringing the Orb of Magic and then discarded us when it reached his filthy grasp. Sophia saved us but couldn't save herself from the death trap. But the goddess gave us another chance to set things straight. And by that I mean the statue casually appears inside the castle. Huh? Well they don't seem to be too bothered by it so I probably shouldn't be either. Anyway she sends us 20 years back in time where we meet young Sophia to aid us on a quest to get the legendary life flower. But she is cautious which is probably good. Bad touch! Bad touch! Stranger danger! I mean you shouldn't just accompany anyone who claims to be your family friend. Now you may ask why do we need a defenseless child's help in the first place? One she is not defenseless even as a child. She already knows magic. And two only a member of the royal blood can access the Saturner temple and she is the only one I think I can trick. FBI, open up! Anyway, after reaching the Saturner temple, we had to overcome a lot of trials. The first one is to just not fall. But then, shit just went from 0 to 100 real fucking quick. A surprise attack that almost killed Sophia but we somehow scavenged our pace and completed this segment on our first try. After we kill all the monsters, we are treated to a puzzle which I'm not good at. But this one was pretty easy. All we need to do is to just follow this pattern 3 times like so. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, there. After that, we fight the second most annoying monster with the highest defense in the game. To the point where reflecting its own attack at itself is the only way to kill it. Then we have to cross the peaking plates. And what happens when you step on a peaking plate? <laughs> Easiest way to cross it is to memorize the pattern. There is this mirror at the end of the hall which has the powerful banshee Odell sealed within. Unfortunately, the mirror has magic absorption capabilities which was sucked out of Sophia. Though she is fine, Odell is no longer sealed. Once freed, Odell ran away with the holy flames which we have to retrieve in order to access the location of the life flower. Just pull this chain to open this gate so we can proceed. As we go towards the first holy flare, we come across two giant slimes. Just push them against the firewall and keep slashing. Stepping on this pressure plate removes the firewall for us. And now this next battle would have been the most gruesome if the pattern wasn't so damn obvious. After all of these are defeated, two of these turn into movable stones and one provides you with dragon armor. From the left side, you can get explosives to blast through these peaking plates. We don't have to deal with all these bats, just kill some, break this underneath rock, push this rock, pull this boulder and quickly pass through this slim path. But don't rest yet or the floor will eat ya. And there's the holy flare! Oh. Now that we have the holy flare, we can safely cross the snatching woods. Then we travel on the hovering chain rails to reach Sophia and hand her the holy flare. So while Sophia leads the way, we can deal with the exploding bats. And by dealing, I mean avoiding, cause Sophia ain't stopping. Now we charge through the crumbling pathway to the hall that Sophia teleported to. Now that the first holy flare is in its supposed place, we go on to bring back the second one. Now those who have seen the previous parts knows these. These monsters just go in their shadow realm, pop out as a drill to mess with us, randomly move to a direction and if you miss your attack it's a rinse and repeat till either they or you go down these are the single most annoying monsters for those who don't know anyway you just have to go down come back up pick this pot and place it on this pressure plate to open this gate then pick this explosive blast the pot from behind this gate so that this gate closes but that gate opens and now we can proceed and bird gliders content. Anyway, now comes one of the most rage gaming moments. These moving bastards. Why you ask? This is why. I don't even know how I kept myself contained after falling off the edge so many times by these turret dead bush motherfuckers. But I'll say just stay triangular with them so when they charge at you they will collide with each other if you move back a little bit. And the same helps reflect their consecutive orb attacks simultaneously. And stay away from the edge. After we are done with these bastards we come across the unstable chain rail. Fast reflexes are needed in order to properly pilot this which is why my will slowly dies every time these segments come. After that just climb this platform, go through these peaking plates, grab a bird and start flying using this air vent tornado. 
Now it's time to cross these ladders which are only accessible when wind blows. Now on this platform kill this bat, take the explosive it drops and throw it at the lamppost according to the pattern which disables the firewall so we can just jam the rock into the death trap and then climb it to reach the next area. Here we are to eliminate these giants which is quite easy. Just let them attack which stuns them, climb on top of their head, keep slashing the head and if they emit lightning climb down. Repeat till both of them die. As soon as they crumble away, the second holy flare appears, we pick it up and pass it to Sophia. After which we proceed to the difficult unstable chain rail segment again which almost drove me to insanity. But after many failed attempts and a bruised arm due to me hitting the wall so many times, we finally leave the site and part of my soul. Also there's a chest which we can access by landing on this floating piece of island if you need it. So after venting our frustration out on a single conveniently placed giant slime, we return back to the temple. After launching ourselves into the central hall, we go to towards the mirror to set the second holy flare in its place and now it's finally time to claim the price of our hardships, the life flower. As we sing the soothing melody of the royal family, the mirror disappears and opens the path to the place bearing the life flower. But of course we don't just get it like that, yep Odell snatches it. But her attacks aren't that unbeatable. First one is to just stay inside the perimeter she builds, then she spreads in four directions with her obviously different clones, just beat the red one. Third one is the orb attacks and the last one is laser shotgun. Just avoid an attack. As soon as she is beaten, she just straight up explodes and drops the life flower. And so it's finally time for us to part ways with past Sophia and reunite with present Sophia. After we revive her that is. And now that we are both aware and angry, there's a score to settle with Charles. But he is a strong boy now with the power of might and magic. So much so that conventional attacks don't even hurt him anymore. So we have to reflect Sophia's attack that bounces off of Charles back at him to stun him so we can properly damage him. Bruh. After he is weakened enough, as we are about to end his sorry ways, Odell steps in, just eats the attack and fucking dies. With the split second he is given, Charles flees the premises to revive Daraka the evil dragon. If Daraka is allowed to roam free, that would be disaster for Earthia. And stupid Charles tries to control such a monster. And now we have a mess we can't deal with so we get premium subscription to the power of might and magic from the goddess. With that we start our long ass battle sequence against Daraka. After dodging some attacks we fight him in a big enough opening. It has two attacks. First the icicle attack that creates a path for you to climb and slash it behind its head and the flamethrower attack that I don't know how to avoid but it doesn't have much damage. Once its HP gets low enough as he starts regenerating we throw a big cannonball at him. Realizing it bit off more than it can chew it quickly tries to flee away but that ain't happening. We bout to ride that bitch. Now what to do when we have easy access to its weakest point? Of course we drive it to safety far from this crumbling battlefield. We glide it away from floating island. You calm the fuck down! There's a missing point! Use its fire breathe to clear obstacles and evade the falling debris. Seeing we avoided danger, we decapitate its left wing and head. But as it is on verge of collapsing, Sophia comes to the rescue with another unstable chain rail. Who could have guessed? Not me. Guess who's happy? Also not me. That shit fucking sucks. But after a bit of violence against the wall and a few broken fingers, we reach the point far from the destroyed battlefield. Then Daraka's corpse almost fell on us. What a stupid incident that would have been to kill the protagonist in the end. But guess what? Since we got too close to Daraka, we got possessed. But there must be a cure, right? No. <coughs> Sophia had to actually kill us to stop our suffering. Conveniently, they had to kill the main protagonist after that torturous segment. The petty level is staggering. In the end, she shows up to his grave with their child. And that is how the story of Might and Magic 2 ends. A hero dies saving the world. If you wanna see similar content being a regular thing, please subscribe. It gives me motivation to keep posting. Also thanking all my subscribers and Donald Mandauko for commenting me to finish the Might and Magic 2 gameplay. Y'all are the true legends. Anyway, have a good fucking day.